You have entered the Aqua Brain. I'm your Virgil Drew. On today's show, we're going to talk self governance. We're going to talk tiny homes. I met him when I was working AB in Seattle. Welcome to the show, John Dalton. Hey, John, how the hell are you? I'm doing pretty good. Andy, how about you? Oh, man, hanging in there. So the weather's starting to change, so it's starting to get a little colder out in the garage here. So might be oh, moving gotcha. the show inside here pretty soon. Totally <laughs> fair. Totally fair. Change of the seasons. How about you? You're out in um, – are you on the islands there in, in Washington? No, so now I'm out on the peninsula. Um, okay. There's Port Townsend. That's kind of the area that I'm in. It's kind of sure. like the northeastern end of the peninsula. So it's kind of – it's a good spot. We're kind of, we're literally like in a patch of woods right now. So. Oh, that's, man, that's fantastic. And I, I want to get to that too, because you're actually living, what, you're living in a, a tiny home? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this, this space currently is the tiny house that took a while to build, but it's here. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I've got to, I've got to say, uh, I was looking on your profile and it sounds like you were just in, if, hey, if I do this, there's a fly buzzing around. It's fly season here in Boise. So gotcha. of course, once I started the show, then the flies moved in. So oh yeah, you um, know. But I did shower. I'm I'm good. good but uh, good. but it doesn't matter. The flies don't care. Um. All right. So date hard. Tell me about date hard. Uh. So I've been kind of a film person for a while and whatnot, and I established. Uh, working in the audio video industry, some people that like, you know, did film things. And yeah. one of those guys recently hit me up. He's like, I need to do a movie thing. Do you want to read a script? Cause I think you would be good for one of the parts in there. I'm like, yeah, awesome. whatever. And yeah, I read the script and I was like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll do that. And uh, yeah, it was, it was actually pretty fun. That was one of the first times I was on like a, a semi legit um, film set since like college. So it's, wow. it's been, uh, a hot minute because it's all just like anything else that I've done like acting wise uh has been like hey I've got a little like DSLR and a microphone let's just run and see what happens and that was that's all so I've the, ever really done so this was like a legitimate production with a crew and lights yeah. and everything yeah they actually we um they rented out uh certain locations and whatnot and like back when I was trying to do a um a production company in yeah. back home uh we we tried to do like yeah we'll just get some sets we're gonna make a feature link that's gonna be awesome and we yeah, didn't do yeah. any of that it all just oh, fell no. through uh but this time like he he had really good connections already and so he knew where to go he like i mean he was doing this film production uh for uh microsoft so he already knew okay. how to produce like some legit looking stuff yeah um so he already had the connections. One of the guys was already a cinematographer that had like a, a one of the red cameras. He just owned it. Fantastic. And so it was like, okay, this is this is pretty legit. I'll yeah. jump in on this. That sounds great. Um, and yeah, it was it was a blast to do. Um, I, I love doing the kind of just ridiculous, over the top, silly things. So that's my jam. So who? So who's the producer? Who's the director? Um, uh, Rob Lawrence uh he was friends with um or is friends with uh drew annan do you remember okay. drew yeah from, yeah sure. hotel world what is that and party party uh, blimp party blimp yeah drew drew is, is doing party blimp down in la now and stuff but uh yeah rob is he's still been working in uh kind of the uh corporate production realm of doing like corporate interviews with higher execs and whatnot and he's been gotcha. the producer on those so he knows like how to really get things organized and like yeah. make things happen so so yeah he was he was really good on it he was a pretty good director too he knew um the vision he wanted but also left room for like kind of improv and whatever you want to do with that um because yeah one of my favorite parts actually in that uh short was it's actually during the credits where um, it's me and uh, Leona Britt, that's the the person I act act uh, with. Um, we were just doing improv the, throughout you guys that interview. Are, are you the yeah, two leads? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, and we were just like doing an improv banter because Rob was just like, just just go with, just make up something for this. We need some like banter when you're walking away and whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, and. 
just hearing that back now and the conversation we had, it was just, I, I die every time I listen to that. <laughs> Fly attack? <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right. So, so how do we see it? Where is it going to show? What's, uh, is it going to be on YouTube? So it's currently on YouTube. He did kind of uh, like a release day uh, and I think that was like beginning of last month or something like that uh, so it's up on YouTube uh, I've shared it I think a couple of times on my own page and, um, and I know some other people Rob has shared it I don't know if he's going to try and enter it into anything um, oh he should like kind of yeah and I mean if he wants to cool there's comedy short festivals all over the nation he can throw it in and I'm totally fine with that but uh, I'm I haven't heard from him if he's entered it into anything legit. So right now it's just kind of sitting on YouTube. Um, and I forget if it's under just his uh, personal YouTube channel or if he made like a production name for it. But it, if anything, it, um, uh, yeah, search for date hard and it should pop up. So, Hey guys, after you watch this, go and check it out. I, from what the fun. production stills that I've seen, it looks hilarious. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, it's just over the top, over the top ridiculous. It's, it's just slapstick really. So that's what we need right now. We need, we yeah. need some oh my good, gosh, yeah. good laughs. <laughs> All right, John. So I, and I promise you guys, we're going to get to the tiny home because that's, that's huge, but I've got to, I've got to hear about this self-governance thing that you're, you, you've been into. I know, I know, I, politics is a hard thing, right? Because yeah, yeah. everybody's got their own form of what they think politics should be. And so essentially you can't have a conversation with somebody without disagreeing with them. I think that's the, <laughs> I think yeah. that eventually I mean, you get to a point where you're like, no. And they're like, yes. And then you're like, okay, this conversation is just pointless now yep, this is where but, it ends but i would love to hear uh your thoughts on on that and given this election cycle uh that thing that we're in um this uh clown show uh <laughs> so uh, uh please tell us please tell us your thoughts so i've been kind of down this um self-governance anarchist uh it, it comes in many flavors there's like voluntarism and uh, sociocracy, things like that. There's a lot of different things. Hopefully the flies don't kill you. Oh, that's <laughs> but, all right. You, you just, uh, you just keep talking. I'm going to, I'm actually going to go and I got a uh, fly swatter inside. Uh, you know what though? I'm not going to leave my show. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to deal, I'm going to deal with the fly. I was, I was okay. going to like, here, you talk, I'll go. <laughs> uh, all right. So, <laughs> so self go I'm just going to end up swatting this thing. Um, I'm going to okay. end up knocking everything over. It's going to happen. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's going to go to static and yeah, uh, all right. so, battlefield. So, so self governance. So yeah. So basically, it comes in many different flavors. Uh, I kind of fell into it when I was kind of trying to figure out, like, actually, in building the whole tiny house thing, I, I wanted to make a community, and it was kind of figuring out how does a, a community operate in a, in a decent fashion. Uh, and this kind of led you started leading me down this whole rabbit hole into what is governance. Uh, and yeah, right now, especially with the, that very first debate <laughs> between Trump and Biden, everyone I know is like, I need to drink right now. And I'm just like, Hey, there's, we can try something else. Um, but it's, it's kind of, um, you have to have uh, a community together to really actually make it work. It's not like, I'm just going to be me out over here. That's where you get like the isolated homesteaders sure. and stuff like that, where it's just like, I'm doing my own thing and screw everybody else. But it's like, I mean, you have to participate in something in order like a to support actually, like, system. Right? Yeah. And that's kind of where it, it's, so it is kind of like self governance where it is like you take care of yourself. Uh, you, you know how to like take care of your own needs. Like you know how to, uh, get your water or your food or your power. And you know, you can have, you can build your own shelter and repair it. You don't have to rely on like a centralized utility kind of a thing. Gotcha. Um, where it is, it's like, you are, you're pretty much self-sustaining. And then it's kind of, you, 
get a group together where it is like now you guys rely on each other for it's like hey my crops failed this season do you have any backups or whatever and it's like oh yeah sure and so it's it turns into kind of like a mutual aid self-governance type thing where there isn't like a an overarching power structure that's telling you like no you can't do that like i mean there's certain um cities and and uh counties where collecting rainwater is illegal right and i've heard that that's that's just in, insane to me. <laughs> it's like, oh, so I can't collect water on my own. And yeah, they like to throw in where it is like, no, that, that could be like, depending on your roof and whatever, the water could be contaminated or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, sure. So let's filter it. Like, See, I, always, that sounds... I always think that that water um, goes to an aquifer and then that aquifer is, is what feeds the city water system and all that stuff. And I, that's, so whenever I hear about that, and, and I don't think that, you know, I definitely think if you're going to want, if you want to collect rainwater, you should be able to. Um, but, but I always think that that could factor into to where those rules come. And maybe that aquifer in that area is very, um, has a very finite limit, you know, where it's like, if we get the best rain that we have you know in 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 years then it's going to reach this level well by the end of use it's going to be way down and i don't really know how aquifers work and i know i'm trying to kind of like derailing the conversation but uh, well no and that still ties back because it is turned into how is the the water source regulated by the, the county or the city and stuff like that where it is like now we we have this centralized water supply right here and this is the chain that it's going to come through. And if you try to break that chain, it's like, no, 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 no. We can't track that. We can't track who's, how we're using this water and where right. it's coming from and making sure like, I mean, if this water is like contaminated or whatever, and it poisons a bunch of people, we like, we know that's the source that it yeah. came from and we can like kind of remedy that source. But it's like, you also have to, if you can let people, um, find their own source like digging a well even sure. uh like digging a well uh stream collecting rainwater those are all like three very decentralized ways of getting your own water supply but it is like you have to test that water to make sure it's not like got some kind of um uh earth material that has like integrated into the water and right. has become poisonous like that that happens and plus there's like half of the northern states have fracking going on and so sure. it's like yeah, I mean, they've contaminated some of the groundwater there and you got to be careful if you dig a well near a fracking area. It's right. like, it, there are stipulations you really have to think of when you're doing, trying to like isolate yourself from the system because the system, they built their self into where it's like, yeah, we've got it all under control, guys. But it's like, if one part of that chain fails, it's like millions of people are screwed. Like the whole, I mean, uh, it, it was funny, like, one of the first things I, I wrote about with my whole thing was about water supplies and decentralizing that because it was like the whole thing with Flint where it was like they had all of these old water pipes and everything like that and they just didn't do anything about it and then it just like ended up poisoning, poisoning like the entire community because they just they didn't the, the politics got in the way of actually like right. having something happen to actually like fix the water supply so not the whole city just gets poisoned because they just decided to not do it and it's like can we can we fix this there's there's this another step that we can go beyond like a political system that just put, kind of puts in more roadblocks for progress and that's kind of where i get into with self-governance and whatnot so where do people find your writings oh my writings uh that's that's all panic tippy uh, okay so it's i have it's a whole website um i'm still kind of trying to build out like I'm trying to build like a whole membership section and stuff into it. So it's kind of like in the midst of things, gotcha. but that's where all of my articles are at is panictippy.com. Um, and I have a Facebook page and whatnot. So cool. do you, do you do videos as well on that site? I've, I've started doing videos. Um, I, my first one is a little over the top, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's um, I have currently there's uh, three videos on my YouTube channel right now where it's, two rambles and then a tour of the the last place that I had the tiny house which was um a church that's doing a whole permaculture mm. operation there because they they're, they're kind of 
yeah, they want to um, help have more uh, food resilience for their community and help provide that. So it's like they made a, a food forest, a very small thing, That's but awesome. it's, it's open to whoever walks by, like pick whatever you want kind of a thing. So, yeah. Wow. That's, re that's really cool. I've got, I've got an idea that I will run by you later. Um, but I want to, but I want to, I want to hear a little bit more about, um, about the self-governance. Um, huh? can you, can you tell me how in, in your, in your vision, how do people join and, and what is the, uh, what is the ideal situation? Like, let's say, let's say, uh, you could just wave, uh, magic uh, wand. I was going to say a, hang a white handkerchief, but I, I think that's going <laughs> to, that's going to paint the wrong picture. Um, yeah, sure. Magic wand. Uh, let's go, let's go there. Uh, and what, so what does it look like, John? Uh, so one of the things that I came across was, um, this group that's called, uh, the conscious resistance. And they came up with a whole system that they call uh, Freedom Cells, which is basically just like it's a group of uh, around seven to nine people uh, that come together and they are able to they have a, a just a plan together where it is like, hey, we can take care of this is our bug out plan. We have this for food and this for water and we have this for like protection, like guns and stuff like that if you need it. Um, and it's. Yeah that that's kind of like a starting off point where it is kind of like your bug out group. Uh, but it is also for me, I, I kind of took that to another level because I um, started to uh, get a little involved with another group out here called uh, Rooted Northwest, New, Rooted Northwest, uh, yeah. which is a um, agri village up here in Arlington, Washington. Uh, I love and Arlington. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's really nice. Out. <laughs> I got, I got family up there, man. I, I love it. we, we go up there and, and have picnics and stuff. So, so tell me oh, about nice. this. Tell me about this village. Yeah. So it's, it's 200 acres um, and they're trying to build it out right now. Uh, but their whole model is uh, sociocracy to make groups function. So, and, and this is kind of the closest thing that I've seen in action to what it is that I kind of see uh, mm -hmm. where it is basically they have a general group of like everybody is a part of that. And then there's like uh, six or however many other groups that you need for like the finances, the the land organization, the building stuff, regulations. And, and there's a bunch of people within those groups, but all of those people are a part of like the whole general group as well. Oh, and gotcha. so it's like, if you want to participate in any one of those groups, because you know something in one of those veins, you can reach out to those groups and be like, hey, I might be able to help out in here or, Hey, I just want to kind of like learn and, and get involved in this side of things. And it's like, you oh. can totally do that. Um, Very cool. and, uh, and you can be a part of multiple groups. It's more of like, however your bandwidth is for trying to manage what all is happening in those different groups. And, uh, and then it's kind of, you have either with sociocracy, it's more of there's a leader and then a kind of co-leader person who just kind of like leads the dialogue. They they just start the conversation. It doesn't mean they're like, er, that we're, we're putting in the rules and stuff like that. It's um, they start the conversation and then it's them and the kind of like co-leader that go between groups to kind of like coordinate with, with the other groups. So it's like, if there's some overlap between the finance realm and the, and the land realm, then they have the, that conversation where there's the two members from each group that come in, have a conversation. Um, and mm -hmm. the only way that you are uh, able to make decisions uh, in all of this is unanimous consent. Because that's been the, the biggest issue. Like that's the problem right now with uh, our current like state of the United States is like, we don't have unanimous decision at all. We're like a ah, majority rule by 1%. And then we kind of dictate right. everything up on top of this very like minority group, which is literally just half of the population. And they don't want any of that. And it's like, this is where we come into all kinds of issues. And so the whole point with, uh, the, the sociocracy and self-governance type stuff gets into more of small focus groups that can have unanimous consent and can respond to issues quickly um, and wow. can adapt quickly. So it's not, you don't get bogged down with red tape. You can find solutions a lot quicker and it's a, a matter of unanimous consent within people of that 
like division and then they can branch come into like the general group or whatever and be like hey we're doing this and like the general group can have like a weekly meeting a monthly meeting or whatever where you get kind of updates from each little group so then everybody knows like the general thing of what's going on in this community and whatnot wow. um and that only really works on a small scale yeah like um you i mean you could probably get up to certain like hundreds of people but um i it starts to kind of like splinter uh, after like a certain threshold of people yeah. and so it is kind of like you get more into kind of the tribal mindset stuff where it is like yeah you're kind of more focusing in this vein and then there's this other group over here that's more focused in that vein but it is a matter of like those two like larger groups being able to realize like what it is that they have that they can exchange with each other that like benefits both it's a, a mutual aid type thing between the larger groups so how does that exchange work is it mostly a barter system or how do it's what? it's however you want to imagine it um and because i've gone down this rabbit hole too because i was like money is evil and it's like i mean not really but uh there's a lot of alternatives to how you oh, do we'll exchange and um like one of those things is a time bank uh, they, there was a dude that did this like back in, I think it was the late 1800s here in the States. Uh, but it's, um, it's a whole thing where it's basically like you have like a dollar that's for like one hour of whatever it is you want to kind of barter your time for. Sure. So it's like, for me, uh, like an hour of carpentry work or something like that, I can use that to pay for like an hour of like a massage or something like that. Gotcha. And that's, that's kind of what, how a time bank works. So you're literally just like trading in time instead of mm. objects. Um, but you can also, you can do a form of bartering or you could do a form of a currency. But I mean, if you're going to do a currency, like get it backed by some physical asset, like uh, in the permaculture realm, um, I have, I have, this whole huge book, the designer's <laughs> manual. Yeah. Oh, um, Bill. Yeah. Bill. Yeah, sure. yeah. Molson, man. He's awesome. But, uh, towards the end of it, uh, he talks about this kind of stuff of like how implementing like permaculture into a sustainable society really works. And he's like, yeah, the thing, if you're going to use currency is back it on a physical asset. And what he used was actually like the forest. So it's yeah. like $1 is like one tree. And so when you like, you, you try to actually manage your forest supply so that you like don't screw up your whole monetary system. And so it's, you have to keep everything in balance instead of like our current system where it is like money is made out of nothing, essentially it's made out of debt. And so it's sure. like every dollar I give you, you're immediately in debt to me. Like the, you, you don't actually make money in our system. It, it's all debt. Like that's, that's just what it is. There's no physical backing for it and you fluctuate inflation, all that fun stuff. Yeah. And that's, you know, the way the, the whole like slavery freedom thing. I mean, that's, that is a, we just, Oh yeah. It, it's littered with rabbit holes, which is exactly, just, it makes it so that it's very hard to get anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting. And, and I'll put links in the description to, to some of these things and, and definitely yeah. go check out uh, John's uh, panicked hippie. Um, so I want to, uh, with the panic hippie, are you, I know that there was talk of, uh, you doing some sort of panic hippie creations. Uh, can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? So basically, um, how I've been going about my life a lot lately is <laughs> DIY everything. Um, and so mm -hmm. in some of that realm, well, fun, like I, I'm too, exactly. It's, it's really cool to like, I mean, I just repurposing old objects for the most part it's giving everything a second life zero waste and all that kind of stuff where it's like yeah. hey this old glass bottle i can turn that into a lamp or a bird feeder or whatever um and it was a matter of like me starting to get like addicted to like oh this bottle would be really cool for that um <laughs> to the point where i was like okay i've got a lot of stuff i should probably like make things and just sell them or, or get rid of them kind of a thing and that's where the, the creations part came in because gotcha. i just like to make things um and uh i've gotten down a whole like wide swath of things I want to make, but I've yeah. got large projects here on the property that are taking up a majority of my time. So it's like the building stuff isn't like the creations isn't happening, but I have the list and I have all of the supplies to do it. It's just getting the time to do it. So, so, and people can, people can stay up to date with that on your website as you, uh, as you 
create things and as you write articles mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that's, that's really cool. Yep. So yep. I, I, I really, I, I promised everybody that we talk tiny homes. So <laughs> I remember John, I remember. So you moved from where, where was it? It was Kansas, Kansas city. Kansas city. Okay. So you moved to Seattle from Kansas city mm-hmm. and we worked together and we don't need to talk about the company we worked for or where, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it was good times, good times, right? We, we had mm-hmm. fun, you know, working, it was running, a thing. running video signal, whatever we were doing. I, you spent oh, a yeah. lot of time on that, in that lift, man. You, oh, you God. spent a lot of time in that lift, but uh, <sighs> all right. So, <laughs> so, but I remember, you know, on downtime or whatever, or breaks, you were always sketching stuff out. So can you tell me your process? But how you, you went from a conception to like, I don't know if conception is the right word, but your, your idea or your mm-hmm. goal to where you are now, we're talking to you in your tiny home. And it's, it's just funny how I've basically tried to interconnect everything. And so basically the, the tiny house was the lead in to do this whole community thing. Cause the whole reason I even got the idea was because I wanted to make um, a homeless community but uh it was they come in they um kind of draw out the little kind of house that they want we build it on a trailer so that like if they want to leave after the certain kind of like rehabilitation period sure um it, they can take their house so they are no longer homeless and yeah. they can go wherever they want um oh. and and i was wanting to get it to where it was like there would be a network of these little communities and so if like they they want to go from like washington to florida or something like that there's community in each of those states there's like a whole like uh network that could reach out and be like hey yeah we'll help you tow your house down to florida and get you set up down here like that's that's where i really wanted to go with it and like right. I was like, okay, so the first thing I got to figure out is how do I build a tiny house? <laughs> and, um, and so then I started going down that rabbit hole and I was just like, I, I need this. I need to live in one because uh, yeah. I want to just like travel around with it. Um, and so that the whole design process took about three years or so because wow. I started, um, I started working on the the plans for it probably like a year and a half or so before I moved to uh, Seattle. Oh, gotcha. And then of course, while we were working together, I was like still drawing out all those plans, but it was like, I got to Seattle and it was like eight months into being there. I'm like, I'm settled enough buying a trailer. And I, and I just yeah. like, I bought the freaking, the it's a tiny house trailer from uh, Iron Eagle down in Portland. And I went and grabbed that. And then just went into someone's backyard out in West Seattle. And I was like, I'm starting this thing. Um, and then, you know, ran into some issues. And then uh, and then I had to move uh, the build site over to Bremerton. So over here on the peninsula. Uh, and then that's kind of when I started transitioning between our old company and Amazon and all that fun right. stuff. So, so was it, I'm sorry to stop you. Was it the mm-hmm. issue that building a tiny home on in that city or... So the whole thing with tiny houses is the legal definition around them. Um, that's, that is the whole issue. There's no legal definition except for now. Recently, they, uh, within Washington state, at least, there's um, a, a lady I know, Hannah Rose Crabtree. Mm-hmm. Um, she had started a whole company called Pocket Mansions. Uh, she, she had started a meetup group for, it was, I think it was like the Northwest Tiny House Group or something like that. Um, and uh she was actually the one that kind of led the legal charge to get uh, a tiny house on wheels defined for the state of Washington. And so in the state of Washington, it is defined now. Um, However, it's up to each county and city to on whether or not they actually want to implement that uh, definition. So it's up to the county. It's like, Oh no, over here, it's illegal. And then over here, it's okay. So it's by County and it's not even every state has a definition. It's, it's, Wow. It's a whole thing now, but that was the issue that happened in West Seattle was the person that I was building in their yard. They were trying to make it as legal as possible, like make all these contracts and whatnot. Um, and uh, we had gotten the sign off from like um, in insurance or whatever, her insurance or whatever to be like, yeah, okay, that's fine or whatever. And then apparently it was like a few months later, they had actually looked into like what a tiny house was and they were like, Oh, Oh no, no, that's not cool. Actually, wow. we're gonna, and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna pull out your uh, your home insurance uh, if you let him keep going." And wow. then 
And then the bank that was running her mortgage got wind of that. And they're like, Hey, if you don't have home insurance, we're going to foreclose your house. Wow. <laughs> and so, and so it just they really it just, didn't want you to build that no, tiny No, they, line, man. they really didn't want it to happen. And so, wow. and so the lady was like, Hey, you've got until like the end of the month to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and so it was kind of like a last second, like, ah, uh, where do I go? And yeah. I found a, a, another friend over in uh, Bremerton that I was able to go over and, I completed the build over there, but, um, yeah, it was, there was a lot of headaches that happened here. So I, I remember kind of following your progress and you were doing them in increments and stuff. So what, what was the first, I mean, obviously the drawing up the plan, uh, drawing up the plan was, was a, a big deal, right? That took a long time. Mm -hmm. And then once you oh, had yeah. something, so I guess here, here's a question. So, from your plan to your final product, how many how many changes and adaptations did you have to do? <laughs> it's like okay, uh, oh, five man. hours later, we're like, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, well, it's it's kind of funny because when I first drew out, like, it's I have like I still have all of the notebooks of all of the original like little sketches and stuff that yeah. I did. Uh, but it it took probably five or six different forms. Um, before I really like the initial floor plan, I changed that like a few times. I had stairs, I had a wood stove and all that. I mean, I still have stairs, uh, yeah. but it was like a spiral staircase because I wanted to be fancy. <laughs> and it's like, no, don't do that. That's too complicated. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it took a lot of uh, refining and it was because when I was getting into this, it was kind of like that, that beginning moment of popularity with with tiny houses where it was before the hg tv show and all that stuff yeah like that's what, so i was in there before that show was around to be like okay what's going on in here what's going on and it was there wasn't a ton of uh stuff and it was kind of like poking around and being like hey does anybody is anybody selling their plans or whatever can i see like the nitty-gritty here yeah. i bought i think three yeah i bought three different plans <laughs> one from Canada, one from Australia, and one from the States. Oh, uh, and, and, and that's, oh, this, that's where you but, get into all of the building stuff where everything is different. But did you end yeah. up, did you end up using things from each, from all three? Yep. I pulled, I pulled from each one of those and mashed together to like make my thing. And uh, once I got like a final, like well drawn out design, um, that meetup group that the, the Hannah had started, yeah, uh, there was actually a few architects in that group. Oh, perfect. and so I was like, "Hey, I've got these blueprints. Can you look at them?" And <laughs> yeah. uh, and they looked at them and they're like, "Oh, dude, yeah, this is yeah, you're you're pretty well set." Uh, they nice. they suggested a, a little overhang over my front door, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that's duh." Um, yeah, and, Washington. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I got kind of the approval from them or whatever and i was like okay cool if like a professional that looks at blueprints all day looks at mine and is like oh you you actually got it covered okay and so, so so building permits do you need a building permits to do this i recommend doing so <laughs> okay. this that is the definitely the route if you want to be a hundred percent legal with everything do permits uh talk with the the uh your local um county uh, legislators uh, to, to figure out like what are the regulations around here, what is possible and stuff. Um, because it, it can be very easy for an entire build project to be just pulled out from under you because it was like a, a neighbor was like seeing this project unfold and the neighbor has mixed feelings about what tiny houses mean. And oh, it's kind of like, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to the city officials and tell them that there's this build going on over here. And then the officials show up and they're like, Hey, Where's your permit? Where's your uh, hard you hat? I'm calling OSHA. Yeah, yeah, no, for real. And like, <laughs> if if you don't have any of that stuff, you don't have like a professional contractor and things like that all kind of like wow, signed off man. on this. It's kind of like you got well, a lot of issues. Well, because eventually you have to license it, right? I mean, you have to get a so license yeah, plate for it. There's two. There's two kinds it's of trailer, routes of going right? about this. Yeah. So, uh, and that's been the the weird legal definition of like when you license this thing what is it licensed as uh like actually with with hannah her boat um they ended up getting it licensed as a land yacht uh, which is <laughs> it's literally a boat that never sees water 
like that's what <laughs> wow. it's that is, that is what it's licensed as and and it's kind of these these things that you kind of have to look into a little Maritime, bit like it, everybody yeah right <laughs> but uh it was uh uh, this whole thing, I went to um, the DMV at one point, and it, and it wasn't in regards to the tiny house. I was just like standing in the line, but some dude had gone up there, and he was he had done a schoolie. He did a schoolie build. Okay. Um, yeah. And so he retrofitted this whole school bus and whatnot, and he was up there at the DMV, and he was like, "All right, I'm trying to register my schoolie," and they're like, "What? Wait, what do you? What is it? So what is it?" And it's like, yeah. "No, it's it's a schoolie that I live in," and they're like, "Well." So is it an RV? And he's like, no, it's a school bus. And it's like, it well, is though, okay. right? It is <laughs> an RV. Yeah, but it it is like he couldn't he couldn't move past the the fact that it was like there wasn't a legal definition for a schoolie. Yeah. <laughs> like you you have to be you have to fall into the regulations of an RV. Uh, like if you for um, a tiny house, if you're gonna travel a lot, if you're gonna go to any like a bunch of like campgrounds and stuff like that, your house uh, needs to fall into the RVIA. Um, uh, regulations so then if you go into um uh, a park or whatever you have all of the rv hookups that like they're expecting like if you have like a gray water and a black water tank so you can actually get rid of your waste and you don't just show up with a composting toilet and you fill your toilet and you're like okay where do i dump this composting toilet here in this park <laughs> the park is going to be like no buddy you're in not the bear dumping bin. your toilet <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah and that's and that's a whole another thing too is dealing with the waste around what it, what is a tiny house because that's the other addiction here with tiny houses is like everybody does a composting toilet and it's like well okay so what do you do when the when the toilet's full like that's, john, that's a I, whole problem john i think we definitely need to do it we should do a whole show on the tiny home ins and outs <laughs> ins and outs um it's a lot yeah it is it is so during the build what was your did did you have any um did you have any major setbacks like was there was there something that you like if if somebody was doing a a build mm -hmm. what is what is one thing you wish you knew before i know you've touched on a couple but mm -hmm. is there is there anything that you you wish you had known before you bought your first boards and started putting this thing together don't build outside just ah. just don't build outside like so with with my whole build process um the entire process took three years Whoa. three years from trailer bot to me living in it um and so i went through all of the seasons multiple times with the build um yeah. and if you are outside you're you're gonna run into a lot of issues with things um like the the big major thing that i had was um it was the the trailer i had put tarps over it and stuff like that but uh the tarps were not well sealed and uh they actually ended up making a micro environment in, underneath the the trailer oh. to where it trapped moisture um oh, man. and and then that went into the under like the the um the subfloor and oh. uh we we didn't find out how bad it was until we started trying to drill a hole uh to install the shower and the guy was like uh john you might want to come and look at the lake i found oh, um, no. and so that was a whole like derailment for like a few months of like i gotta like clear out like redo the entire floor i had just i had just put up the walls and i just put up the the, the roof so that, so it was like an enclosed structure finally yeah um and and we were doing this in the winter out here where it's like raining all the time right, right and so we had just gotten everything up and then we start drilling the hole and we're like we got to tear out the entire floor oh. um and uh so yeah it if you're gonna do this um find either like a garage a warehouse something like that or get your time management set out to where it's basically like hey i'm not going to have a full-time job for an entire year so i can knock out this house build if you're doing like a DIY thing right. like because if you start running into the different seasons unless you're building in like Arizona or something like that sure but, I was gonna say that you find yeah, out like, find a, a climate that's you know conducive can, all year round to do it exactly and and that's kind of what you have to figure out like if you're gonna build one of these things and you're gonna build outside your timeline is gonna fluctuate especially if you're trying to DIY this I do not recommend DIY so this is this is a whole thing like 
do it legally. There's, there's even if you don't want to do RVIA uh, kind of a thing because it, 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 you have to compensate some of your design to fall into RVIA sometimes. Uh, but there's another organization uh, called um, uh, NOAA. Uh, it's N O A H, and uh, it's just kind of it's a group that does um, uh, regulation and permitting for alternative housing. Um, oh, cool. And so. During your build process, if you go through this group, you send photo and video updates to this website, and then they kind of like sign off on it as like, hey, they are legally building correctly. Cool. Thank nice. you for doing that kind of a thing. And that's that's how you like really get, like when you get this NOAA certification, that's kind of like you have been defined that you've, you've followed um, uh, construction standards to where like your electrical is right, your plumbing's right, your, your framing is right, your like structural soundness is correct. Like you have enough strong ties and stuff. So it's not like yeah, the degrees yeah. is gonna blow over the whole thing. <laughs> like yeah. I have so many strong ties in this house, it's ridiculous. Um, right. But yeah. So, so ladies and gentlemen, there, there's just a lot more to building a <laughs> tiny home than just buying a trailer and, and putting some walls and a roof on it. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm going to put a bunch of stuff down in the description so that there's some uh, resources down there as well as John's information. Thank you for joining me in the brain, John. This has been awesome. Oh yeah. No problem, dude. It was freaking awesome. I like having this kind of chat. It's good. It's good. Please like comment and subscribe. Hit that bell. So you know, when we put new videos out, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at brain aqua. This has been Aqua Brain TV. Remember to keep your head up and keep those knees bent. <laughs>